In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to simplify expressions. First type of uh, simplification process we're going to use is called combining like terms. You can see here in my example, I have one, two, three, four terms. Some of these are like terms, and the like terms are the ones that I'll be able to combine. Some of these are unlike terms, and I won't be able to combine or simplify those terms. So taking a look at our expression here, and our four terms, the only terms in this expression that are like terms are the x terms. In order for terms to be like terms, they have to have identical variable parts. And you can see the variable part on each of these terms is x. So those are identical. You might think that this x to the second power is also a like term, but it's not. Because it has this second power on there, these variable parts are not identical. This one is a little different, so that is not a like term. So what we do with an expression where we have like terms is we combine them together. We do that by adding the terms. The like terms I have here are 3x and a negative 6x. So I'm going to add these terms together. So if I add a 3x and a negative 6x together, it's going to give me negative 3x. What I'm going to do with the rest of the terms in the expression is I'm just going to bring those down. So the 2y couldn't be combined with anything, so I'm just going to bring that down as plus 2y. The 4x squared couldn't be combined with anything, so I'm just going to bring that term down. Notice, when I move these terms, I also bring the sign with them. When I got that negative answer to these combined terms, I wrote the negative 3x. When I bring down the 2y, I also bring the plus sign with it. When I bring down the 4x squared, I also bring the plus sign with it. So this expression is as simple as it can be. One other thing that I want to do, and this, exam, this answer is perfectly fine, but what we typically do is we try to write our answers in descending order, which means we write the highest powered exponent, the highest powered variable first, which is my 4x squared. So I would write 4x squared, and now both of these variables kind of tie, so it wouldn't really matter the order in which I write these. I'll write the negative 3x next and the plus 2y. So we're also going to use multiplication to simplify terms. And you can see here, I have a multiplication problem. Anytime I write something next to a set of parentheses, it means I'm going to multiply. In this case, I'm going to take this 3x and multiply it by this 2x. So the way that I would start is I would start by multiplying the coefficients, or the numbers, in these two terms. So I would take 3 times 2, which is going to give me 6, and then I would take x times x, which is going to give me x to the second power. And that may be a little bit confusing, but you are familiar with exponents, so let's take a look at this a little more closely. We're probably all familiar with 5 to the second power, and we all understand that 5 to the second power means 5 times 5. Well, if I'm going in the other direction, if I take 5 times 5, I can also write that as 5 to the second power. So normally, if I write 5 times 5, I would just go 5 times 5 is 25, and that's how I would simplify that answer. However, if we're multiplying a bunch of x's together, we don't actually, we aren't actually able to evaluate those x's. So we could write this answer as x times x times x, or a simpler way of writing that is writing x and then placing an exponent on it to indicate how many times it's getting multiplied. So in this case, I have one, two, three factors getting multiplied together. So I would write x to the third power. And you can see, that's how I get x times x gives me x to the second power when I multiply. 